So, good afternoon, good morning, good evening everyone, depending on where you're watching us from. We are here today to talk about uh, an important and delicate operation happening here at CERN. We're in the midst of replacing the very heart of the compact muon solenoid, or CMS detector, which you see right behind me. Uh, this is one of the many milestones on our way to restarting the Large Hadron Collider in the next couple of months. But more importantly, we're also here to answer your questions about what's going on at the LHC, so please leave them in comments on the Facebook Live post. My name is Achintya Rao, and with me are Rende Stierenberg from the LHC Operations and Austin Ball from CMS. So we start with Rende. Can you tell us a bit about the LHC? Yes, yeah, so the LHC is the most powerful accelerator in the, in the world, uh, 100 meters on the ground. And in this accelerator, we accelerate protons up to this close to the speed of light. And then in the four collision points, of which one is this CMS experiment, we will collide these protons. So the counterclockwise and the clockwise protons, they will collide in the middle of the experiment and uh, produce the secondary particles for uh, the CMS experiment. Which brings us nicely to you, Austin. Can you tell our viewers where we are right now? Well, right now we're 100 meters below ground, beneath the French countryside, uh, near the commune of Sessi. And what you can see behind me is the, the CMS experiment, the compact muon solenoid, which acts as a giant camera uh, to take pictures of what happens when protons accelerated by the LHC collide with other protons in the counter-rotating beams. And by, you, by analyzing the pictures that we take, uh, we're able to probe the, the, the deepest structure of nature, the standard model, the Higgs boson, as many of you will already be aware. And can you tell us, Austin, why are we here today? What's been happening behind us? So what's been happening today is, is we've been replacing the, the very heart of, of the compact muon solenoid, which is the, the pixel tracker. Um, it's uh, equivalent to, uh, to a camera of 124 megapixels is what we've just installed. And you can see some pictures here of uh, part of it being lowered this morning, uh, put in place uh, on specially aligned tables. Uh, so that it can be inserted into, into the middle of the experiment. Right, so the, the pixel detector itself sits on the surface when it was brought in here, and then it's been, it's been lowered to be inserted in there. The, the pixel detector has been built over the last five years by consortiums of uh, institutes from around the world, and this is uh, one of the culminating moments where all of this, this equipment has been assembled and tested here, and now it's actually ready to be inserted inside CMS and start to do its job once the LHC starts again. So what we see right now on the screen, in fact, is one half of this barrel pixel detector, as it's called, being inserted. This operation itself happened on Tuesday. Um, can you take us through what this process involves? Yes, yeah, so uh, as you said, Chintia, the, the detector's divided into a barrel section and then two end cap sections, and the, the barrel has to be inserted in two halves in order to fit around the beam pipe in which the protons are circulating. So what you see here is some pictures from a, a couple of days ago where we inserted the, the first half of that, of that central barrel. And today we've just finished uh, inserting the second half and uh, moved the two pieces together so that they completely surround the, the beam pipe and get very close to the point where protons will interact once the LHC starts again. So right now we can see the pixel tracker in its cassette as it was brought down from the surface yes. and then it was slotted in to just around the beam pipe in order That's to prepare right. the detector for collisions. That's right. So can you tell us what the pixel tracker itself is? What does it do? So the, the pixel tracker is the, is the heart of the CMS camera. It actually has uh, the vast majority of the, of the sensors that are in CMS. As I said, 124, mil, uh, 124 million sensors. So it's a 124 megapixel camera. Um, the difference from the cameras that you're familiar with is this one takes uh, pictures 40 million times a second. That's the rate at which bunches of protons collide at the heart of the CMS detector. And so by, by measuring um, the positions of the, of the particles that are produced uh, as a result of the proton collisions, we can uh, analyze what, what's uh, actually happened during the proton collision and, uh, as I said, probe deeper into the standard model, study further the Higgs boson and look for new particles that we might not have seen yet. Right, and Rende, one of the reasons that the pixel tracker has been replaced is because of the improvements and changing conditions of the LHC itself. So can you tell us a bit about Yes, about so that? over the last years we've been running the LHC uh, with, with different beam conditions. And actually, especially last year, we've been exploring the margins which were still there. And, and that's why we managed to increase the number of collisions in these experiments. And as Austin already mentioned, 
uh, this then required the, the upgrade of their, of their detector to be able to, to have this higher resolution, so to be better determine where the origin of the collision took place. So one of the things, of course, is that when we collide the protons inside the LHC, uh, we don't have individual protons. We don't throw just a handful of protons at one another. We throw about you know, hundreds of billions of protons at one another. And typically about 25 to 30 of them or so will, will, in, will hit each other every time these packets cross. Yes. And that number is being increased. It's being increased, yes. And, and one of the consequences for that, of course, is the fact that we have a, a new pixel detector to, to cope with those conditions. Austin, can you... Can you tell us about how the new pixel tracker differs from the, from the one that it has just replaced? So the, the, the main difference is just the number of individual sensors. So we've basically gone from a 66 megapixel camera to a 124 megapixel camera. But this one is distributed, it takes 3D images actually. And uh, this one is, is composed of four layers rather than three before. And the first layer, the closest one to where the collisions happen is now uh, about seven millimeters closer than the previous one. So this gives us a uh, better location of where the collision happened and also better reconstruction of the particles that come out. And as Render mentioned, uh, we, we, we're dealing now with 50 or 60 superimposed images on each of our photographs, if you like, event images, whereas previously only 25 or 30. And so these extra layers, these additional number of sensors help, help us to deconstruct uh, this, this image into the individual signatures of what happened when a particular pair of protons collided. Right, so as Austin just said, you know, you have these um, multiple exposures for every photograph that you take 40 million times a second, and previously you had only about 25 to 30 simultaneous exposures in every photograph, and you had to figure out which image is showing you what in that same photograph, as it were, and now that's gone up to 50 simultaneous exposures, which means that you really need to be able to discriminate between them uh, quite precisely. And you mentioned a bit earlier that this project has been going on for a long time. CMS has been operating for a few years now, but many years ago itself, it was planned to replace this pixel tracker and the construction and so forth began. Indeed, yes. Uh, we, we, we understood that uh, we would have to replace this part of CMS first for, for two reasons. Firstly, the one we've already discussed, the number of multiple images that you get in each picture, but also because gradually the, the, the huge number of particles which pour out from the collisions at the LHC gradually damage the detector itself, and sooner or later it becomes unserviceable. So we had planned actually from 2011 onwards to make a replacement, and uh, this, this particular stop of the LHC is to a large extent geared towards uh, replacing this pixel tracker at this point. Um, institutes from around the world contributed mostly in, in two groupings, uh, one from Europe, nine institutes from Europe, uh, which built the barrel section, and then almost 30 institutes from the United States, which, which built the, the, the end cap pieces, which we'll install in a few days. Okay, and Rene, coming, coming back to you, so what's been going on with the LHC itself? Uh, yes. How are you gearing up for resuming collisions uh, in 2017. Yeah, so, so as Austin already mentioned, uh, uh, presently we're in a year-end technical stop and, and the length of the year-end technical stop is, is determined by this operation. But not only uh, this operation is the reason for this year-end technical stop, also in the machine uh, many repairs, upgrades and changes will be made and now we're nearing also the end of this in the machine and already parts in the machine are being cooled down again to create these superconducting uh, uh, conditions for the magnets. And on the 14th of April, the machine will be handed over from the engineering department back to the operations group. And we will then uh, start commissioning all the hardware again. And by the beginning of May, we will inject the very first beams again. And then we will have a, a period of eight weeks thereabout to ramp up the number of particles in the machine to get to the nominal amount of collisions uh, which we will need for the remainder of the year. So around summertime, then we should be. Yes, before summer we should be in in a in a normal regime of running where we have again uh, a good number of collisions. So Fantastic. our job here at CMS is to make sure that we have the detector behind us all closed up and ready by the time renders ready to deliver collisions, yes. and then we can start measuring them. Absolutely. So in fact, one of the reasons you can't see bits of the detector behind us is because the detector is in an open configuration. We have pulled apart some of the wheels of CMS that are on, on one of the sides, and that's how we can access the inner bits of the detector. Now, all these wheels have to be then moved back into place, and that itself is not an easy operation, right, Austin? It takes... Well, because uh, the wheels you're talking about are objects that weigh uh, between 1,000 and 1,500 tons, and we're moving them with clearances of just a few millimeters. So it's always a very delicate operation, 
And of course, you have to know, you have to put them back uh, exactly where they were before. So yes, it's, 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 a tricky, it's a tricky operation, but we have some, some very skilled crews here and um, I'm sure we'll be ready by the time Render's ready to, to deliver collisions to us. Yeah. So a detector that's 15 meters across, 15 meters high, you know, a few meters thick, has to go down to a precision of microns. Exactly, yes. Uh, CMS, uh, in fact, both Atlas and CMS, these giant detectors, can you, you see immediately a, a contrast between um, objects which have a fantastically large scale but are measuring extremely small uh, distances and extremely small curvatures of tracks, for instance. And so the combination of large objects with high precision is a feature of, of the difficulty of making these, uh, these, these detectors. Okay, and now we have some questions lined up for you. So how does a detector like CMS detect particles? Why does it need to have so many layers? And how do those layers function? Right, so the first thing is that the, the, the analogy with a camera only goes so far. Um, and you, in fact, you need several different types of camera in order to detect uh, effectively all the different types of particles that can be produced when, when the protons collide. So generally, you can almost see behind me this, this sort of onion-like structure. Of course, it's a, it's a cylinder that you see behind me. So different layers of the cylinder, each with a different functionality. The particular detector we've been talking about uh, is based on uh, semiconductor diodes depleted um, by, by applying a high voltage. So when a, when a charged particle goes, goes through, it leaves ionization, which th then you can collect as an electrical pulse and transmit that to a computer, which can then interpret where the pulse happened uh, as, as a position in space, which is what the beginning of beginning to reconstruct uh, a picture of what happened when, when, when particles came out after the proton collisions. All right, so here's an interesting question for maybe both of you. I'd, I'll let you decide who's going to answer this one. We have a question from Farah Ben Hamouda on Facebook who wants to know, are you guys still looking for a faster than light particle? Shall I? Yeah. Go ahead. So uh, we, uh, certainly that would be a very interesting thing to find, um, although amongst the things that I think we might find that, that comes pretty low on the list. Um, we're not specifically looking for faster than light particles. In, in fact, um, as Render would confirm, uh, you know, the, the whole operation of the, of the LHC depends pretty critically on knowing that the particles that we're circulating are effectively traveling at the speed of light and also the particles we produce here, they're pretty much traveling at the speed of light as well. And, and everything is based on the fact that that's a limiting velocity. Now, you know, the, it, it, it's very difficult actually to, to, to measure very precisely whether things are uh, going at the speed of light or not. So occasionally, uh, one can get uh, rumors that, that, that um, deviations from that are, have, have been seen, but none of them has turned out to be true. And a question for you, Narendra. Yes. After this winter shutdown, will you finally collide particles at 14 TeV? So yeah. for those of you who don't know, the LHC is designed to operate at an energy of 14 tera electron volts or TeV. And for the first couple of years, we operated it at about seven and eight TeV respectively. Yeah. And uh, since the first long shutdown, so the last couple of years we operated at 13 TV. Yes. So the question is, are we going to 14 this year? No, this year, the answer can be very short. This year we're not going to go. But now to make the answer a little bit longer is that um, during this first long shutdown, uh, things were consolidated and we managed to go to this higher um, uh, current and this higher uh, energy. Now, uh, in order to go even higher, we need to train the magnets uh, mm. more. And this will take a substantial amount of time. And uh, this training will go away from physics time. So right. for the moment, we prefer to orientate all the uh, efforts towards producing beams for physics. And then we have an upcoming uh, technical stop or long shutdown again in, uh, in 2019. And there we might consider uh, putting in place all the efforts to go to 14 TV afterwards. Okay, but this is still on the discussion. Can you tell us a bit about how these magnets are trained? Because that sounds quite fascinating. Yeah, so these are superconducting magnets. And, and when you ramp them up, there are enormous forces on the coils, on the, on the superconducting strands, actually. And, and um, the slightest movement of these superconducting strands can, make, uh, can produce heat. And this can cause the superconductivity to be lost. Right? And what you do in, in training these magnets, you ramp up the current in these magnets. You actually you settle the strands so mm -hmm. that they get into a position where they are comfortable and that the next time you ramp the magnet that these strands will not move again okay so but this means that you have 
uh, many, uh, all these magnets have to go through these uh, training uh, campaigns. Okay. And that takes time. Yeah, yeah. And, and CMS would not want to lose time uh, in training the magnets even though we do benefit from higher energies. Yeah, I think the, the, the opinion of the experiments is that uh, running at the energy we're at at the moment is a good thing to do. We've understood all our calibrations um, at, the, at this particular energy and there's a lot of physics we can still do at the present energy without uh, trying something extra. That will be a good thing to do, uh, as Render said, after the second long shutdown, which is coming up in a couple of years. All right, so thanks very much uh, for watching our first Facebook Live, everyone. Um, you, can, you can also follow CERN on Twitter and Instagram, and CMS can also be found on Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. Plus. There uh, might be more questions, I think. Uh, make sure to, to follow our coverage of the 2017 LHC restart with the hashtag WhatsAppLHC that you should see on your screen right now. Um, thanks very much. Uh, goodbye.